The Michael Hill story started with the jewelry revolution when he opened his first store in Fongaray on May 13, 1979. His philosophy was to make jewelry buying less intimidating and more accessible to the public. And just 18 months after launching, Michael Hill Jeweler starts manufacturing their own jewelry ranges in-house, focusing on unique styles, better quality, and excellent prices. Incredible growth, seven stores in seven years. Michael Hill Jeweler then lists on the New Zealand Stock Exchange with all shares getting snapped up quickly. The company moved into Australia and were successful, emphasizing there was no need to pay high prices for quality jewelry. In 2002, the company took its first step towards a thousand stores, launching in North America with Michael Hill's daughter, Emma Hill, setting up operations in Canada. In 2003, the Michael Hill International Violin Competition is born and is set up to recognize and encourage excellence and musical artistry in young violinists. Then, the Evermore Collection was introduced, with one to one and a half carat diamond rings, ensuring everyone can own a diamond. In 2004, Michael Hill celebrated the incredible 100 stores milestone, opening up in Western Australia. The company then launched a watch collection, with Michael being a sixth generation watchmaker. This rich family history of craftsmanship helped form the cornerstone of the Michael Hill watch collection. In 2007, the company sponsors the Michael Hill New Zealand Open, with Michael hosting the tournament himself on his own championship golf course. In the words of Michael Hill himself, dreams do come true. In September 2008, Michael Hill International opened 17 stores in the US. The company now holds 136 stores in Australia, 52 stores in New Zealand, and 29 stores in Canada. Michael Hill was then named New Zealand's Entrepreneur of the Year and represented the country at the World Entrepreneur of the Year Awards in Monte Carlo. To find out more about this iconic brand, I flew to stunning Queenstown to catch up with the man himself, Michael Hill. However, finding Michael will be difficult today as he has one of New Zealand's biggest sporting events in his backyard, the Michael Hill New Zealand Open. Yes, he has converted his deer farm into one of New Zealand's most prestigious golf courses. And it's now home to the New Zealand Open. Who has a golf course in their backyard? So, Michael, tell me how everything started for you. Yeah, that is an interesting question. You <laughs> said it was going to be a tough question. <laughs> it is a difficult question. Well, I guess when, it, when you say start, I suppose uh, it really all happened when I was 40 because we'd, we were building a beautiful home uh, up in Northland and it was on the waterfront and it was up in the bush. And um, we went to the pictures one night and uh, when we came out, the, uh, the house was uh, on fire. And uh, we, we rushed to the, to the house site and realised that it was basically all over. It, it was a turning point where I decided that probably I had been playing the first 40 years of my life far too safe. Yeah. And it was it, something snapped inside me. And it, from that moment, it made me um, very positive of what I wanted to achieve. And I hadn't had the guts to stand up to my uncle at the jewelry shop, which I had worked for 23 years, uh, to, to have a bigger stake of it. And in fact, at that moment, I wrote down on a visiting card, which I had in my pocket, I only had what clothes we stood up in, uh, I was going to own my uncle's business. A stupid time to have a, a, a dream like that. But it was enough to empower me with, uh, with a vision um, to, to act on that. As it so happened, my uncle didn't sell to me and uh, I set up an opposition and um, gee, that was in uh, 19, uh, 1979. And uh, in 87 we went to Australia and um, now we have uh, 250 shops in, in Canada and the United States. So after the fire happened, you decided to just go all out and start your own business. Well, I didn't, it didn't quite work like that because I, I, I knew nothing more than my uncle's jewellery store. That was where I brought up. My mother was brought up, my father was brought up there, I mean, and my grandfather. So I needed to own that store, or at least, at least you know, uh, half of it. Um, but after the fire, I wanted all of it. But my uncle never really wanted to sell to me. But that was the greatest thing he could have said because it, it, I had no option. I had to start. I, I just had this drive that I really wanted to start up. So I started with a little wee shop just down the road. I found a backer, I had no money, and I found a backer who had backed me and only wanted 20%, I had the 80%, so I mean, it was a cool investment. 
And we set up an opposition with a little wee shop with a 15 foot front versus a 35 foot front of the family business, which was a big, big, big turnover, big jewelry shop. And uh, within 18 months, I was doing more than the, my uncle's business. He was furious. So what sets Michael Hill apart from other jewelers? Well, we didn't always, we did manufacture, but we never used to make all our own product because there was lots of temptations from China and from India and Europe and all places to make our jewelry for us. But what we found is we were getting different um, variances in, in, in performance of finish. And it really, if we were to build ourselves a brand, the, the best way is to produce the finest product you can. So making sure that everything is faultlessly, meticulously finished. It's easy to knock out things very quickly and very cheaply and inexpensively. But as far as building up the Michael Hill name, um, you need to be synonymous with flawless quality. And uh, that's something we really do. And that's why we do manufacture everything in one place, is that we can keep a real eye on that. And also we can have our own individual designs. I mean, a lot of the designs now we're doing are, are completely in-house. Uh, my wife's doing some design. Uh, we've got all sorts of things happening. So why do Michael Hill watches sponsor the Open? So Michael Hill watches are becoming uh, synonymous with um, golf, fine golf courses, and music. Classical music for the Michael Hill International Violin Competition. So what would you say sets your watches apart? Well, we used to sell all the, all the top brands, but what we decided if we were going to become a true global player, that we really could not sell any product unless it was a Michael Hill product and it just had Michael Hill on it. Like every piece of jewelry will have Michael Hill, with our diamonds will be laced at Michael Hill, um, and our watches. So we made a, uh, it was a pretty brave decision, but we really threw out all the watches and just kept our own. Now, um, it's gone particularly well. The first year we sold 65,000 watches and uh, I think this year we're up to uh, nearly a couple of hundred thousand watches. So it's, it's proved to be quite a good call, but by branding them with the golf course um, has actually given that quite a bit of weight, it really has. So it's actually amazing that as we sit here, the New Zealand Open is happening in your backyard. Just in the backyard there. Yes, it started with the chipping green beside the house, and seven years later, this deer farm has been transformed into one of the most respected 18-hole golf courses in Australasia. This amazing course has been the home of the Michael Hill New Zealand Open for the last three years, one of New Zealand's most prestigious sporting events. I got a chance to take a look around Michael's beautiful property and take in some of the golf. Michael Hill Watches sponsors the Michael Hill New Zealand Golf Open, and I've been told they have a store marquee on site. Now I love anything shiny and gold, so it didn't take me long to find the marquee, meet some of the team, and find out about the special history behind every piece in the watch collection. So Mercedes, we're in the Michael Hill store marquee, and it's to my understanding that Michael Hill Watches is one of the major sponsors of the New Zealand Open. Yes, and it was the perfect platform to launch the Michael Hill Watches, as every major watch brand is associated with a major sporting event. With the New Zealand Open Golf Tournament, it's the most prestigious sporting event in New Zealand, and we're happy to be associated with it. So, Michael Hill has a strong lineage in watchmaking. Yes, he comes from six generations of watchmakers, and Michael Hill actually trained as a watchmaker after he left school. So, Mercedes, tell me about these watches. All of our watches are designed to deliver precision and the attention to detail that you would expect from Michael Hill. <laughs> our watches are world-renowned. So Amy, tell me a little bit about the Michael Hill watches, because I know the history of them and now we're actually going to get a feel for touching them. Tell me about the series that we're looking at right here. Well, this, this particular style of watch is one of our newest styles. Um, one feature about this is that it has a diamond bezel. Um, it has a mother of pearl face, 
most ladies' watches don't have a second hand or a date. This has both. Um, it has got the great Roman numerals. It does. The Roman numerals are beautiful. It's very comfortable. As you can see, I, am, I wear one. And it is the nicest watch I own. Amy was so passionate and knowledgeable about the watches. She soon had me falling in love with this stunning watch. I just have to take this home. Now I'm used to shopping on Rodeo Drive in Beverly Hills, and I give these beautifully crafted watches the thumbs up. Absolutely gorgeous. So opening up stores in Canada and the US, what do you think you've taken from that and brought back to here in New Zealand? What we've found, which is uh, really in, um, has made a difference, is that because it's so tough doing business in the United States, and because a lot of the things, um, the traditions there, are quite foreign to what has been done in Australasia, we didn't think they would work back home. But the surprising thing is that they do. The, the Americans are very, very great retailers, and we have discovered so much, and it has made us so much stronger in the core brand, which has been so good for us. You see, our market has changed from where we were, which was to uh, a, really to a transactional a discount approach with me fronting the TV ads. Jewelry is the most emotional yeah. purchase yeah. that one makes in one's life. I mean, we sell the most sacred of products, really, and that is, I mean, you know, your loved one, you buy yeah. them an engagement ring, and then, my goodness, there's the, the wedding band, and then there's children, and there's yeah. presents for them, and there's the anniversaries, and on it goes. Uh, I mean, these are very emotional, uh, emotional uh, things. So because of that, we have changed and we've soul searched to, to produce a look of a shop, which is pretty unique. It's based on a shop I saw, a jewelry shop I saw in Beverly Hills, and I think we've taken it to a new standard, but they're, they're very moody, they've got, uh, they're, they're quite dark, but the jewelry is very, uh, is, is well lit. But it has a romance to the shop and, and, and a lovely feel. And uh, this is all part of, of brand building.